All right, uh, in this video, I'm gonna be converting this, uh, I think it's a 1951 uh, Farmall Super A from six volt to 12 volt. Uh, I did a very extensive series of videos converting a Farmall Cub, a 49 Farmall Cub from six volt to 12 volt. I'm gonna be doing the exact same thing to this tractor. Uh, they are so very similar. And I would recommend if you're gonna be doing this to a tractor that you've not done before, um, if you're not super familiar with this sort of stuff, check out my uh, check out that series of videos on that Farmall Cub. So go to uh, you know go to my videos. There's a whole uh, series on that Farmall Cub, and I think there's six videos in that series. I cover everything from the wire size to the terminals, the the terminal ends you'll be using, uh, all the way down to uh, where I bought the parts and stuff from. So I mean, super extensive series of videos. That ain't gonna be this one. Um, so if you've run across this video, I would say go over and check out the Farmall Cub. But uh, on this one, essentially I'm gonna be doing the same thing. I've already removed the two wires off the generator here. I've got some kind of electrical issue going on with this tractor. I've replaced voltage regulators twice on this thing. It's, it's um, I'm diagnosing it again as it keeps coming back to the voltage regulator being bad. I just cannot believe that the voltage regulators keep frying on this thing. I mean, I'm talking like two of them in the last oh, year. So uh, I'm going to switch this thing over to 12 volt. I'm wondering if there's something going on with that generator there. So anyhow, you can switch these things over to 12 volt for like a hundred bucks. You know, you, and again, go to the go to my Cub series. I show you where I get the parts. Alternators like 50 bucks. Um, I'm going to be also putting a, a voltmeter on this where it's got an ammeter, um, you know, this gauge here. I like having the voltmeters on them. It's, it seems like you get a little more information with a voltmeter. You know, you can tell uh, how much, you know, if the alternator's charging, you can tell, you know, how much is being pulled down. Anyhow, I'm just more familiar with a voltmeter. So I like voltmeters. So I'm gonna put a voltmeter in that hole. Uh, you see I already got the switch off on the, uh, on the light switch here. Um, pull the battery out, pull the box off. Real simple stuff here. Uh, you can tell the wiring up in there is in pretty good shape right now. I just redid all the wiring on this tractor about uh, six or eight months ago. But again, I keep having issues with it, so uh, let's get converted. So uh, taking off the generator, or taking off the generator right now. I'm waiting on my alternator to come in, but I'm gonna start wiring up. Again, this is the uh, this is my wiring diagram. This is the exact same diagram that I used for that cub. I'm gonna be using it again on this Farmall Super A. Uh, this might be a little different up here, the light switch. The, the cub had a three position light switch. This one's got a four position. Um, so I'm just gonna probe out that switch. I'm gonna take it off and uh, see what the different positions are. Other than that, this is the wiring diagram I'm gonna be using. So uh, again, this is gonna be a quick Quick little one here, uh, you know, nothing like the other, the one that I did on that cub, but uh, more or less the same things. We're gonna change out this coil. Um, the plug wires and everything are brand new on it. Uh, the distributor, uh, it's been kind of tuned up a little bit, so that's all in good shape. Um, I got good cables for my batteries, so I'm gonna reuse those. I got a good switch on my starter. That's been replaced recently. Again, brand new wiring coming down here, so I'm gonna re I'm gonna be able to reuse some of this wire, uh, but change out the alternator coil, the voltmeter, lights are gonna have to be changed out. Six volt lights will not convert to 12. You'll blow the bulbs. I've heard that the bulbs will actually like pop, so I don't know if it's true or not, but that's what I'm gonna be doing here. Uh, again, the alternator is not in. I'm waiting on it in the mail, so uh, I'll fabricate something fairly simple. I've seen on other Super A's, actually I've got another one in the other barn. It's, somebody did a slap slap job on uh, just throwing an alternator on here. They ran a bolt all the way through this bracket and then the alternator attached out here. So I may do something similar with that. I uh, might have to come up with a different slide for the top there depending on you know what I get into clearance wise down there. So. That's gonna be pretty much it. I'll catch you up here in a little while. Well, this is the flow chart that I'm using. Uh, if you guys are Google searching anything about tractor wiring issues or farm all wiring issues or whatever, I can't. I couldn't tell you exactly where I come up with this. Somewhere on Google, I found it, and this seems to be like the go-to resource for a lot of people on these uh, forums. 
Anyhow, this is the flow diagram that I'm using to help me diagnose the problems here with this uh, with this tractor. You see, I got the generator on the bench. I got it off the tractor. I can't get anything out of this generator. Now, when I had it on the tractor and I'm going through these different steps, you know, uh, generator or jumper, the field terminal to ground, the ammeter was showing a charge that says replace voltage regulator. Well, again, I've replaced a couple of voltage regulators on that thing and it's still doing it. So, um, you know, it kind of would intermittently work. Well, I got the generator on the bench. I can't get anything out of the generator now. So, um, you know, ground the body, try to you know, apply voltage to either of the studs, nothing. Ground the studs, apply voltage to the opposite stud. I can't get anything out of this generator. So I honestly don't know how I was getting the ammeter to show charge when this thing was on the tractor. So anyhow, um, that's where I'm at. I feel pretty good that there's something going on with this generator and it's it's beyond my comprehension what that might be. So we're just going to convert, convert this thing to 12 volt and be done with it. All right, so this is the back side of the headlight switch and here's how I'm going to wire it up. Here's how I kind of probed it out. Uh, this is the hot wire. That's power coming in from the fuse. Uh, you may or may not have a fuse. That's no big deal if you don't probably. Um, so this is the hot this is my rear uh, or tail light. I'm going to use this lug as the power for my um, voltmeter. Um, if you run, a, the voltmeter has two positive connections. One is for the voltmeter to actually function and you know diagnose the tractor and all that. The other positive connection is just for a little light on that voltmeter. So it's illuminated at nighttime. So that's what I'm going to run to this. So whenever I turn the light switch on, my voltmeter is going to light up. This last uh, connection over here that I'm going to use is for my headlights. So that's the back side of, the, of my switch. Again, this is a three position switch. I don't know if I said it was three or four before. I may have been uh, wrong, but it, in fact, it's off, low, and high beam. So again, it's going to be power coming in, uh, rear light, illumination for my voltmeter and headlight all right so i got my coil off now uh chase the threads there just ran the bolts in and out took air gun blew the dirt out all the holes make sure they're uh, in good shape ready to bolt the new coil on when i get it i got both my wires here waiting to go on the coil um, i've essentially made all my wiring connections up under here uh, i had to change a few things around again Referencing my uh, chart here. The only difference really uh, This this diagrams for four position switch that uh, I don't know if, if even that's completely accurate That's what I did on that cub, but it worked on the cub uh, The only real difference here is there's a fuse between the uh, well, let's see it's going to be between the voltmeter and The light switch there's a fuse right here. Um, that's it. That's that uh, you see the little fuse holder there down here. Um, so anyhow, I got all my connections made. I've got my uh, ground. Uh, I'm running ground off the uh, tower over here under the under the touch controls. Anyhow, uh, I just added on another ground, and I'm going to run that down next to the battery box and kind of smash that up, hide it in there. If it frays through the the line, no big deal to ground anyhow. So. I'm not worried about if the insulation gets worn there, but that's going to be smashed between the battery box and the tower there. Uh, but that ground is for the uh, voltmeter here. So I'm waiting on the coil, voltmeter, and alternator to come in, and I'll get all that stuff bolted up when it shows up. Again, got my wire dangling there. That's It's a one wire goes to that alternator, and that's it. So it's real simple. Uh, when that stuff comes in, I'll get it bolted up, wired up, and uh, that'll be it. I'll update you then. All right, so this is what I come up with for an alternator bracket. This is the one I made. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it looks homemade. And this is the one from the factory. Uh, this this uh, vertical piece here, that's what the voltage regulator bolted to. So um, these two bolts go into the side of the tractor and then, you know, this is where the generator was before. Um, but uh, this will work, it ain't pretty. But uh, it's going to be plenty, uh, plenty sturdy, you know. It is kind of long, you know. You got the two mounting bolts here, and then you got all this hanging loose. But you know, this is quarter inch by one uh, stock, so it's pretty stout stuff. So I think we'll uh, be in pretty good shape here. I'll get that bolted up. 
All right, so you can see I got the uh, alternator mounted up now with the new uh, lower bracket there. Got it wired on, just the one wire, and I'm able to use the original top uh, bracket with a slide on it. So that's done. I've upgraded the lights from uh, you know from the old six volt that we're using the original uh, rear housing here, uh, but actually the lenses in those were not original. Um, so I've upgraded to 12 volt. I just did a whole aftermarket uh, set up there. I'm not real concerned that they're not original because you know there's a lot of stuff on this tractor that ain't original. Hell, the 12 volt system won't be original. Uh, I've got the uh, coil mounted up there. Again, that's an internal resistor uh, coil, uh, 12 volt. And if you want to see where I ordered that, check out my other videos that I did that uh, uh, six video series on updating a Farmall Cub. And you'll see uh, extensive uh, uh, detailed, you know, where I bought everything, how I got it, uh, why I bought it, and all that. So the uh, battery cable you'll see here now, since this is going to be positive and I don't want anybody to be confused, um, this is going to be a negative ground system now. So the positive, the red, is going to go to the starter. So I put a little red stripe of electrical tape on this one. Um, the other cable over here was red and is a good cable, so I just went ahead and reused it. I just wrapped the whole thing with black electrical tape. I don't want anybody to be confused. You know, this would have been uh, uh, red originally would have been ground. This was a positive ground system original, so now it's negative ground. So just, you know, to avoid confusion, that's why I got the red and black going over here again. Um, I got everything wired up in the dash. You'll see the blue is my voltmeter. It's blue on the back, but on the front it's uh, black, so it don't look bad. And I'm going to go ahead and stick the battery in here. Uh, I guess I should also say that I upgraded the uh, light on the back. I did the same thing, uh, three, three uh, of the same lights, you know, two on the front, one on the back here. So now I've got a group 35 12 volt battery stuffed down in this case. Uh, just fits. In fact, I had to take a screwdriver. It's, it's a snug fit. I take a screwdriver and kind of wiggle it around and everything and get it to drop down in the box all the way. So if you don't have a box, if you just got like a tray there, it'll fit pretty good too. Um, but if you got the box, I think this box came from Steiner. I'm pretty sure uh, grandpa ordered this one a few years ago. So uh, I'm almost certain this came from Steiner as a matter of fact. Um, so if you got one of their battery boxes, a group 35 12 volt battery is what I put in it. And I'm going to go ahead and stick, you got to stick the battery in the box before you can stick the box in the tractor. Um, and to do that, you've probably already seen, I've got the linkage for uh, the touch controls uh, up and out of the way. And you kind of got to push down on the, the clutch pedal to get the whole thing to slide in there and then I'll bolt it down. So I'll catch you up here in a little bit once I get that all put in. All right, guys, so here we are all put back together. Uh, got the battery box in there. Everything was hooked up before, so it's kind of a struggle getting that battery box in there, get the cables on. It's a tight squeeze, but uh, uh, let's give her a shot here. So we're going to pull out the uh, button, and you see the voltmeter jumps right up. I think the voltmeter's, uh, it's at least a volt and a half wrong because it's reading about 14, and I tested that with my fluke tester that I trust very much and it's about 12.5 on my fluke so it's reading about 14 on here so i'm gonna guess it's about a volt and a half off so uh let's hit the starter here make sure we're in neutral oh it takes right off it's parking real good again it's showing being in the red but i honestly don't think it is now when we turn the lights on we hit the light switch here we are uh old meter lights up so we get that wired up right Get light on back here. Nice and bright. Old meter looks good. Belt looks like it's running real through. Lights are working up here. Then we'll uh, flip the position up one. Right light working. Very good. Alternator's charging. That's uh, running good. Lights are working great. And we'll turn the lights back off. Hopefully, your light goes off. 
Okay guys, everything's working like it should. We're gonna call this one a success. Again, this was a kind of a quick one compared to, uh, you know, that, that uh, bunch of videos I did on the Cubs, so check him out. But uh, uh, if you guys are interested in this sort of stuff, I'm, I'm working on stuff all the time out here in the garage. So I got, uh, I'll be doing a lot of work to this. Uh, it's an International 175C crawler loader hard to see out here in the dark but i'm gonna be doing a lot of work on that so uh you might want to subscribe i gotta do a little bit of work on that uh that's a pc50 uu-2 komatsu that's a gray market machine uh that one needs a little bit of work so i'll be working on that too so uh subscribe you'll get to see me working on all this stuff i got uh i'm gonna end up mounting these hit and miss engines on a uh, trailer here real soon i think i'm gonna put I think I'm gonna put a corn sheller on that one. Grandpa's got a corn sheller, real nice. Somebody redid this corn sheller. Beautiful, beautiful uh, little machine. Uh, the De Laval over there, it's got a, uh, it's got the uh, milker pump on it. Doesn't have the pulse set up. I'm not exactly sure how that works. This here, I think maybe I'm gonna, I might set up something where this either bubbles in a can of water like a, a water pit or uh, I want to say like a water trough either gonna bubble it or I'm gonna make it where it blows up balloons for kids to blow up balloons at uh, the shows and stuff this one here I think I'm gonna run a pump jack on this and I might long-term plan pump jack with a water uh, pitcher pump uh, grandpa's got a pump jack and a pitcher pump over there at his place might put them on the uh, uh, same water tank is the De Laval. Maybe do bubbles in that and then maybe have this pump in water to do a rubber duck race or something. So anyhow, that's just kind of oddball shit I'm working on all the time. So consider subscribing, like the video if you liked it. I hope it helped. And uh, questions or comments down below. Thanks a lot, guys.